So as you can see today, we are here in our little office in Frankfurt and we decided to film a little Q&A video, mostly because we get a lot of emails, a lot of comments from you guys. For example, how we got started in filmmaking, how we run a filmmaking business, and yeah, not just all the gear questions, but also how it's actually possible to make a living making videos. So even though you probably only watch us on YouTube, we mostly make a living um, with commercial work. What that means is we make corporate videos for all kinds of companies. And usually those videos either end up uh, on the cinema screen maybe even, or usually on YouTube or on the website. So we do a lot of different uh, work. We do videos for small companies, big companies. We do all kinds of videos, really more like, let's say, TV commercials with actors, but also more like corporate documentary work, which means maybe we follow a person who works at a company, show their day and maybe make a recruiting video out of it. We think uh, going to film school is not uh, necessarily um, needed to become a filmmaker. It mostly depends uh, whether you have the ability to self-teach you things through tutorials or to just actively practice and then look back, okay, uh, what did I like about my shots and which shots uh, needs improvement. Or if you don't have that ability, if you know that you're a person who needs to be instructed um, step by step and who doesn't have a high self-motivation and is not um, good in learning things on your own, then you definitely need to go to film school because there's no other way um, to learn those things. Um, what we did uh, when we started filmmaking is um, we shot a lot of stuff and then after each video when the edit was finished uh, we looked at the video and um, yeah we checked which things we like which things we don't like we also looked at movies uh, from other people that we liked and um, tried to get uh, to the level where they are at so it needs a lot of uh, self um, yeah, looking back on your projects. So yeah, that's <laughs> basically how we did it. So we didn't go to film school, but another thing that can probably be good is if you go to film school is of course, you meet a lot of people who also want to make videos, obviously, or maybe even feature films. So that is something that we don't really do anymore. We mostly do commercial work. We do YouTube videos. Of course, we have a few passion projects we try to do, for example, some documentary work. But I think really for socializing, meet a, meeting like-minded people, film school can also be pretty helpful. So especially if you're young and you're trying to get into filmmaking, just like when we were 14 or 15, of course nobody took us serious. We were just teenagers making funny videos, right? So who would think we would end up with a proper career being able to actually pay our bills? So that is definitely something uh, that is not easy, even for us in the beginning. Of course, like also friends, actually we started four people, our production company, or let's say our filmmaking, and now we end up just the two of us, not just now, of course, a few years ago already. But that is something you also need to keep in mind that not everyone is supporting you, but that doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing. As long as you really do what you want to do, I think it can always work out. This is a topic that is kind of tricky because depending on what gear you use, clients could actually hire you because of the gear you use. For example, if you have a high-end cinema camera that costs $50,000, I think there are companies who would hire you because they want to shoot a cinema feature film or maybe they want to shoot a TV commercial and that's the requirement. But in general, none of our clients, I would say, ever really ask which camera do you use. Maybe some ask, but it's more like an interest. Maybe they are also interested in cameras, but I think we never had a case where like a client was like, oh, you know what, you use this camera, that's simply not good enough. And if somebody needs a specific camera, they're usually also willing to pay for a rental, which means if a client tells us you have to film with this specific camera, okay, no problem. I'm gonna pay a few hundred bucks extra for you to rent it. So like I said, for us, it's not a big deal at all which gear we use, not just cameras, tripods. Nobody really cares because people see what we deliver, either they like it or they don't, and that's pretty much all that matters.
Yeah, and our philosophy is uh, also that um, people should pay us for the work we're doing and not for the gear that we're using. Um, to maybe give a bit more specific example, um, if you hire a construction worker to fix something at your house or, I don't know, to build a garage for you, you would also never ask, like, okay, so which hammer are you using, uh, which nails? Um, you're just interesting in the result you're getting and how that person gets you there. Um, doesn't matter. Yes, clients do hire us because they have seen um, our YouTube videos. So YouTube is uh, definitely a source for us uh, to generate uh, leads and um, eventually um, clients. I mean, you should know that uh, YouTube is not only a video platform, but it's also after Google, the second uh, biggest search engine in the world. So people actually also look on YouTube for um, service providers of all kinds, not just for video makers, um, also for um, other service professionals so that is definitely a way for us uh, to source uh, clients and projects so as a creative in general as a photographer as a painter whatever you do I think it's always tricky to find clients who hire you because of what you do they don't just hire you because you can do something, but they hire you because they like what you do, they know that you will do it right your way. So that is, I think, something that can take years. And it's not like it will happen all of a sudden. I mean, we're doing it almost for 10 years now as a main job every day. And we're still not there where we always exactly get hired for the reasons we like. But I think, yeah, it just takes time and you really have to try to do what you want to do. And that's also why it's important to have your own project, your passion projects. Like I said, we sometimes do documentary clips or we sometimes do some time-lapse work um, that we like and that we want to show to clients and say, this is what we like to do. Maybe you can hire us to do that. So it's a little bit of a tricky thing. And I think, uh, yeah, it's always going to be hard to exactly get the perfect clients who appreciate 100% what you do, but I think it's doable if you always keep pursuing what you want to do. We started uh, filmmaking when we were still in high school. I think Mots and I we were like 14 or 15 years old by that time. And it was uh, actually a pretty spontaneous idea. Uh, Moritz uh, had a camcorder um, that was given to him by his birthday or for Christmas, something like that. And so we just thought about, okay, let's uh, let's make a video just uh, for fun purposes. So the first project, if you want to call it that, uh, was a music video where we were actually uh, shooting and uh, acting <laughs> by the same time. So that was a pretty fun experience. Experience. and uh, by doing uh, by, by filming uh, we realized okay this is really a cool thing to do and I still remember that uh, moment when we were editing and then that moment when the video was final and you press the play button for the first time and you see the the whole video running and that was a pretty cool experience so that was basically the the, the, the core experience for us to get uh, into filmmaking Later on, uh, we proceeded in um, feature film production. So, uh, of course, we were also still in school and we just uh, took some uh, friends and colleagues and uh, proceeded filming in our free time. Uh, we tried different genres like uh, comedy or also action where uh, we really wrote little scripts and then uh, got together with our friends and yeah, recorded the dialogues. Again, um, part of the movies we were shooting as well as acting, but then, of course, other friends of ours uh, became interested um, as well and then they they joined the commercial uh, film making side uh, started for us um, during the end uh, period of our high school years um, we did a lot of uh, projects by then already um, and there was a new shopping mall opening and uh, somehow they have heard about us uh, as uh, filmmakers in that uh, city um, where we lived uh, back then by that time and they asked us to uh, make a movie about their own opening and uh, pay for that. So that was actually our first, if you so will, uh, commercial uh, video project. 
So we actually already do workshops for a few years now. Usually it's just small groups or maybe just single people who hire us um, yeah, to maybe teach them how to use a specific camera or maybe how to edit. So yeah, that's already what we do. Of course, in the future, we would also like to do bigger workshops, maybe travel around the world. We already thought about doing that. But of course, we always have yeah, to do our clients work. So it's sometimes not so easy. But if you want to have a workshop, just send us an email and I'm sure we can figure something out. So our company size is basically um, yeah just the two of us as core team. Of course, we have a lot of uh, freelance colleagues that we're hiring um, if we're doing uh, bigger projects. Um, we're not looking to employ any people permanently in our company because um, we just like the style of the two of us as core team. Um, but we're looking for cameraman um, in our area because it happens uh, sometimes that we have uh, several bookings for the same day so of course Moritz and I we can't cover everything personally so yeah if you're a cameraman and you know what you're doing um, you work in a similar um, style and look uh, as we do just uh, send us over a message and uh, we can talk about it. So whenever Moritz and I are doing a project, there are some parts that I do alone with a customer. There are some parts that Moritz does alone with a client. And there are some areas where we're both working together with a client. So pretty much everything that is like conceptual work, uh, script writing, preparing shoots, um, consulting uh, the client about the idea for the film, uh, that would be mainly uh, my main my part of course uh, in uh, dig bigger projects um, or if there's a lot of brainstorming necessary we do that together but usually everything that comes before a film shoot would be my part then the film shoot Moritz and I um, we do it uh, together I'm more on the creative director uh, side and he's more on the camera operating and uh, technical side and then post-production um, is mainly uh, more its uh, area and uh, expertise. I guess a lot of freelance people work from home and I guess that's fine. I think it always depends on if you're meeting clients, what kind of clients you have. We don't have a huge office. We have an office in a rather quiet area of Frankfurt, which is pretty nice. Um, we work here most of the time. Of course, we're also uh, doing a lot of shoots, which means we're not here every day. But in general, I think it makes sense to have an office. Um, yeah, if you have bigger clients, if you have lots of meetings, if you maybe want uh, the client to get over for some stuff you need to check in the edit, maybe the client wants to sit next to you when you edit, of course, it makes sense to do that um, Yeah, in an office. We're not really afraid of any competitors because we believe that um, not every film production company is right for every client. For example, there are some kind of video works that we don't do and offer at all, which would be to just give some examples. We don't do wedding um, videography. We don't um, do any kind of live uh, shoots and we also don't uh, do animated or or painted um, explainer videos so in order for clients to receive that service it's actually necessary that there are other film production companies out there as well who can fulfill that demand um, besides the range of services offered i think since we're in a service uh, sector and we're working actively together with a client, um, you have to make sure the client is the right fit for you and you have to be the right fit for the client. So not everybody can work well um, with anybody else. So that's another point um, why it's important to have uh, several film production companies in every city. And um, of course, it's uh, natural that there is a competition. Uh, we're not living in a, a communist uh, country. So... 
we think um, if you do good work, um, if you're there for your clients, um, there will always be enough work for you and um, as well as for the um, other competition. But of course, like if you're not good in what you're doing or if you're lazy or if you don't fulfill your uh, client's wishes, something, yeah, a growing competition can uh, easily kick you out of business. But um, for us, that's not really a topic. So for some clients we travel internationally because we do some tourism videos so for example last year we went to NAB in Las Vegas. But if you're considering for yourself to work internationally you should also know that it's not always uh, just pure fun because uh, due to like production budgets even if you're working with with good and nice budgets uh, you really have long working days you need to cover a lot of topics or not a lot of uh, locations uh, in uh, one single day and plus of course the the stress of uh, traveling if you go there by airplane then you need to have a rental car and uh, whatnot so yeah it's fun and a uh, few times per year it's uh, actually really <laughs> enjoyable but um, if you do it too often then i think it can also get uh, really exhausting Using drones is a lot of fun and we actually own a drone but we barely use it which is mainly because the drone regulations, the drone laws are very strict especially here in Germany in Frankfurt. Like it's almost impossible for someone who is not licensed to actually fly their drone so that's also why we yeah, barely use our drone especially commercially. You need a lot of permits, you need some sort of pilot's license, I think it's similar in the US so that is something that keeps us from using drones. We have someone who does it very well. He's one of the best drone pilots here in Frankfurt. So if we need someone, we hire him. And I think there are lots of good drone pilots out there who do it well, but I think you need to specialize in it because it's so much bureaucracy. And for example, if I put my camera on a gimbal, I don't need some special permission or license or I don't know what, so that is pretty easy. But if I wanna put my camera up in the air, it's much more complicated and that's why we stay away from it because it eats too much time. We do sell um, video footage and especially uh, time-lapse footage. Um, we have several, um, I think, really nice um, time-lapse video of Frankfurt um, and we offer them for licensing. Um, usually um, clients will only purchase a few sequences out of uh, that film um, because we still want to keep that content exclusive so we're not um, selling away the, the whole movie to everybody. Um, it gives an additional income but um, we're not focusing that much on footage sale so um, currently if we would only uh, sell footage that uh, would not be enough um, to fully live on that. So like we mentioned a couple of times now we do corporate videos so that's what we focus on mainly so that means the YouTube content we produce usually also takes a while to make. Even though our videos are not very long, we like to yeah, try to make them as good as possible and try to make everything correct, especially when it comes to gear reviews. Um, so that takes quite a, quite a lot of time, even though you may think, well, that maybe took the maximum one day, maybe it takes three or four days actually, plus additional testing up front. So that is actually why we don't um, yeah, make that much YouTube content because it takes more work than, well, you may think. When it comes to getting into filmmaking, um, you can of course purchase a lot of gear for tens of thousands of dollars, which probably you don't have, especially if you start young like we did as a teenager, you have maximum a couple of hundred bucks that you can spend. So what we actually first got was a camera, then we got a tripod, and the next thing was a microphone, and that's what we did for years. Actually, the tripod was awful. Each time you moved it, it made some creepy noise, um, which was good when we made a thriller, but not so much when we tried to make a normal movie. So pretty much in the beginning, just get a camera, a tripod, and a microphone. Maybe get a dead cat in case you're filming out in the wind so you don't have that awful wind noise, but don't purchase too much gear, just get these three simple things. 
you already got a good tripod, you're already doing it for a few years, and yeah, you got the budget, then go for it, get a slider or, uh, yeah, or maybe a gimbal, but otherwise just get a proper tripod because a gimbal or a slider is never an alternative to a tripod. You definitely need a tripod. I think at this point of time, there are lots of websites and YouTube users out there who make great free royalty free music, which you can use. Usually all you have to do is put a link um, yeah, to the composer in your description, that's it. So pretty much all you need to do is uh, Google or maybe search into YouTube royalty free music. I can also put a few links in this video so you can see where we used to get our music from. Um, now we have a sponsor who provides us with all music which we also use for commercial uh, work but because for commercial work you obviously don't want to put a link or something in the description so legally that all needs to be fine. That's a different thing. But yeah, for YouTube content there are lots of great websites out there, lots of good composers who make yeah great music. When we started filmmaking, I actually used Windows Movie Maker, which is probably the most primitive software you could use. It only has two audio tracks, which means you can put your dialogue and your music, which means if we wanted to edit sound effects, I first have to export the video, put it back in, and then put the audio or the sound effects. So you can start with pretty much any software, I think, for example, even professional software like DaVinci Resolve is for free. Um, there are a couple of free software out there which are pretty good, I think. Um, other than that, you can always get a cheap software like Premiere Elements or I think there's also something from Apple. So I think there are some good solutions. But of course, if you want to get more professional, maybe you end up using Adobe or Final Cut which also is useful because if you work maybe with other editors or maybe with clients who have some projects you need to adjust, they are most likely not gonna use Windows Movie Maker but rather Premiere Pro or Final Cut so you can just open that project and edit without any troubles. We never actually uh, lost any files from a page shoot, but there was one uh, incident where actually the complete footage disappeared, but that was long before uh, we got into commercial filmmaking. That was when we were still in high school, and then we were filming some kind of uh, church event uh, from one of our family members, and uh, yeah, we did, the, we did the whole shoot there. That was still with the uh, camcorders, with the mini... Uh, uh, DV tapes yeah. yeah DV tapes in them and I don't know uh, after that event we did not uh, start editing right away and then after a while when the family member asked yeah so like what about the videos we actually we couldn't find the tapes anymore they they simply disappeared um, until today we have no idea what happened back then so yeah those files, they were lost and they will um, stay lost forever. But yeah, luckily that was the only incident. Sometimes uh, our YouTube footage gets uh, stolen, if you so will, by people who just uh, download our videos and uh, extract some sequences and make their own video um, with it. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but uh, yeah, occasionally that uh, happens. So if ever you see something like that, then we're happy if you uh, report it. Of course, we're also scanning YouTube always um, for such kind of incidents. We actually never really shot any 360 video. I think uh, last year we got a device which unfortunately didn't really work well. So we were like, yeah, this looks cool in theory, but it doesn't really work. Um, in general, I think it's pretty cool, but not to actually move around with your glasses or to move your phone and get dizzy. What I think it's rather useful for is that in post you can choose a specific angle, which can be useful, for example, if you film because you don't have to decide while shooting which angle you pick, right? So that's pretty cool. But in the edit you can do that. Maybe something happens behind you, in front of you, next to you that you don't notice while shooting, um, especially when it comes to maybe something like documentary or maybe you're filming a location. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool to pick an angle and post and actually to leave it like that and not just to make the audience dizzy with 360 video. But to be honest, I think that trend is also kind of over. 
just like the 360 video what I mentioned before that could be something in the future maybe to have a camera that pretty much covers every angle I mean I'm not talking about in two years maybe in 10 20 years that you just go out with a camera it captures every angle in high resolution maybe you can zoom in later or something that is 50 meters away and it's gonna be crisp I think that's something or maybe like I mean drones are already pretty good but maybe also a drone that covers an area maybe you can shoot something like a vlog and um, there's gonna be software who recognizes what may be interesting and automatically edits a video so that is something that I could imagine um, yeah will be more popular in the future so I hope you enjoyed this Q&A video I know it was pretty long now but to be honest we never did one in all the years we did YouTube videos and uh, probably I promised it like 10 times we would do a Q&A video and we never really did it so yeah I hope you enjoyed it and if you have more questions or if you want to see a similar video with just the two of us in front of the camera talking or maybe you say it's too boring then yeah just let us know in the comments.